SMT Nation, We Back Nation. This article from Fierce Network covers a lot of the really important stuff that T-Mobile talked about in their move to potentially get involved in fiber and home wireline. We've been watching T-Mobile become a pretty Im- impactful home broadband provider through fixed wireless access, basically using their cellular network that's traditionally used for mobility, but now using it for home. And, and now they're going to be investing in a wireline segment of their business. Is this good? Is this bad? What, what's the fate? Why is T-Mobile doing this? I just want to talk about that briefly here in today's video. Link for the article, inspiration for this commentary will be provided down in the description. Ways to support us can be found there as well. Please do like and share this video. Subscribe if you're new here and turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload from the SMT. All right, folks, what I want to kind of discuss here today, uh, looking at the commentary and listening to what CEO Mike Sievert had to say about, you know, the, the Lumos deal and the EQT investment, you know, as a joint venture, he made it pretty clear they're, they're still remaining capital light and they're not just going to be throwing a bunch of billions at this wireline investment. They're going to be calculated. They, they're coming in, they're going to pass, you know, a few million addresses and, you know, they, it's only going to cost them $500 per passing and all these other things and all that's fine. But one of the things that I think is most important to focus on is his commentary about offloading the network. Right. He mentioned, you know, the the 5G network having all this usage. And if you have a, a wireline network, you know, the, then you can offload a lot of that. So that to me tells me that the Lumos deal specifically was targeting a place where or places where people really want the T-Mobile home Internet. And they're going to specifically build out the wireline network through this, this, their branding and their marketing and and this positive equity they have with customers. And they're going to convert those customers from 5G home area customers to fiber customers. Now, the, the question becomes is, how do you do that to scale? Like, how are you going to do that across more of the U.S.? Because if indeed that is the case and the end game is to get people off of the 5G network and onto a wireline network, you're basically just tracking where your customers are and then going there and building fiber there, right? Because there's the convergence factor. There's a, a multi service discount you know when you have a wireless customer who also takes 5g home internet or is going to take fiber there's a discount associated with that and then obviously those customers know the t-mobile brand they understand how it works they like what they bring to the table and they have positive equity so what what i think is going to end up happening i think t-mobile when you look at how much money they're spending in this investment only about a billion dollars and they're they're generating free cash flows now exceeding 16 billion dollars annually And that number should increase as they raise prices on customers, force customers to pay for, you know, more lines, more free lines, no longer free and and those sorts of things, moving customers up, increasing ARPU, ARPA, all those things. What you're going to start to see is you're going to start to hear the echoes getting louder about T-Mobile acquiring fiber providers. They cannot scale an organic build of fiber. It, it's going to literally take them a half a century at $1 billion a year. But what they can do is take free cash flows and get instant wire, wireline footprint through acquisitions. You know, you have to think about things like, uh, you have to think about companies like at a larger scale, TDS and, and US Cellular with the wireless side. You have to think about, I think, Frontier, who actually had a pretty good quarter. Uh, you know, and then your smaller players that have overbuilt fiber and don't have the penetration rate, don't have the brand cachet, and aren't really selling the fiber that they built after getting monies from the government, you know, for subsidies, for, for funding that build. So that's, that's why I think you're seeing T-Mobile very calculated about not spending a lot of money in this project. It's, it's going to be towards acquisition, right? So over the course of the next year, over the course of the next two years, so think 25, maybe even 26. The discussion about T-Mobile and Wireline will be namely acquisition targets because they can't build any type of assemblance of a national fiber network. They would have to acquire it, keep that talent, manage that network, and then just sell their brand over it. And, and of course, it could be through joint ventures too. 
and they could continue to do the whole like you know wholesale and all that that that's going to continue to happen you'll hear more of those announcements and, and you'll continue to get the annual one billion investment into the lumos situation but really folks they're going to want to cover up regions of, of fiber players you know that they can get cheap and on discounts because some of those companies are going to be going out of business t-mobile is going to want to get in play there right they're still going to be focused on wireless that's why the u.s cellular piece is something to watch <clears throat> excuse me and i think also that another thing to watch is is dish you know with wireless assets and those types of things anyways tell me what you guys think your thoughts and opinions welcome down below to all the voice of the people the smt nation let your voice be heard